Hi folks, in this video we're going to talk about scholarly monographs and the different types of monographs that are often available and why it's important to kind of know about these because depending on your research and what topic you're researching, you're going to want to know um, which type of resource is uh, and type of information is best for the topic to get the type of information you're um, researching and what will answer your research question. Um, sometimes a monograph isn't even appropriate, maybe newspapers or a journal article or watching a video or documentary is a better source of information. But for now, we're gonna go over a few different types of monographs um, and what makes them a little different from each other. And uh, we'll start with um, government information. Now, we're gonna go over government information um, a little bit later in the course, but um, this is a good example of a monograph published by the government. Um, it's a Senate hearing on the uh, hearing before the Select Committee on Indian Affairs, the United States Senate, 96th Congress, Second Session, Oversight of Indian Health Services, Part 1, January 4th, 1980. So Columbus State University is an FDLP library. So what that means is, is that we um, have an agreement with the Federal Depository Library Program, which is part of the government publishing office, which publishes everything um, from all departments and agencies of the government. And in an attempt to be um, transparent and demonstrate accountability, um, that's the reason why the government publishes so much information. And then think about all the stuff that isn't published and is listed as some level of classification. Um, so what they'll do is, is that they'll send everything that they publish to various libraries around the country. And this was particularly important before the information age because um, to allow the public to have access to it, they needed to um, have libraries, which was a great community hub um, where people could go, the public, um, students, faculty, um, uh, staff, um, if it's a public library, you know, obviously the public is allowed. And basically people could go um, to these libraries and uh, look at the publications that the government sent us. Um, and a lot of libraries um, like us, we do not collect everything that the government publishes. We couldn't possibly, um, we don't have the space, we don't have the room, we don't have the time to put them into our collection. But so we're a small regional um, select depository library. University of Georgia collects literally everything. Everything. Um, so uh, that's just a little bit uh, low down. We'll go over more about government information later on, but um, I just wanted to give an example of a monograph that you can find that is um, uh, published by the government. Um, in this type of uh, committee hearing um, record, uh, there'll be who was on the committee, witnesses, testimony, um, opening statement transcripts, exhibits that were brought in. Um, and sometimes these can be multiple volumes long. Um, this is part one. Um, I don't know how many parts there are, but um, we're getting ready to weed this out. So it might we might only have this one. But, um, and they, it's not just boring government, you know, um, committee hearings and and uh, con congressional record type stuff. Uh, a lot of departments and agencies publish beautiful books and uh, coffee table books um, like NASA publishes these really awesome um, space exploration uh, books and they have beautiful color images and really interesting information. Um, often the uh, agencies that deal with wildlife and nature and um, animals will publish like really neat books. Um, so they're not all boring, you know, airplane manual type uh, stuff that the government publishes. Um, but this is just, you know, one type of monograph. Um, and normally the uh, with government information, it's usually a single topic. Um, so then let's go to a regular single topic monograph. Um, this is B2B exchanges, the killer application in the business to business internet revolution. Um, this has got obsolete information, so we're also weeding this one out. But um, basically, uh, a single um, 
uh, one topic monograph, single topic monograph is exactly how it sounds. It's a book on one topic by one or more authors. Um, often there'll be editors and you'll have um, different chapters listing the different top subtopics within the broader topic. And there will usually be um, like a reference sec uh, section at the end with um, an index um, to refer back to. So this is helpful for if you are looking at, um, yeah, uh, if you're researching topics that um, you want to learn something very specifically written about it. Um, usually uh, current events, you're not going to want to look to single top topic monographs because they're just, uh, often there aren't very many books written yet about them. Um, so if you're looking for current event type information, um, monographs probably aren't um, the type of information you'd want, but um, this is just one example of them. Um, then we also have compilation monographs. Um, this is exam in this example, it's teaching fake news, um, lesson plans for different disciplines and audiences. Um, it is published by the ACRL, a division of the American Library Association. And um, we, it's good to know who's publishing it because the American Library Association, we know is a credible source of information. Um, we, all libraries depend on them for best practices, um, you know, different types of advocacy information, um, what's going on around the country with libraries. Um, so, um, and this is the ACRL, it stands for the Association, uh, Association of College and Research Libraries. Um, so with compilation monographs is usually there are editors, but there's more than one author and more than one author submitted, um, you know, either a chapter or, um, you know, a criticism, a piece of music, sheet music. Um, it could really be anything, and many different topics have these types of compilations. But in this case, it's lesson plans for how to teach different topics of fake news. And each chapter um, and lesson plan is a different um, person who wrote it. Um, often, these types of monographs will not have an index um, because often it is, you know, it's a each chapter is its own short piece of information um, compiled into one book about a single broad topic. So, um, but there will always be um, usually a about the author section in the back, um, especially if it's a really credible source. Um, you want to know who's writing these, what type of background they have, are they even qualified to be talking about this tiny topic. And obviously, that would, I wouldn't be worried um, with a book like this, but if it's a unknown publisher, you know, it's always good to know um, who published it and that there's information about the author so we know if it's credible or not. Um, and this is, uh, these types of uh, monographs are great for when you need to um, look at a whole range of different subtopics um, under one topic. So what this was helpful for me, I teach a course about fake news. Um, I could get lots of different ideas not just about one t one type of um, you know it wasn't just uh, uh, chapters about fake news in general. Um, for example, where's the um, I could look at uh, digital how to teach um, dig digital um, fact checking to co undergraduates and then also senior citizens. Um, conspiracy theories, um, dealing with your family, dealing with um, general public. Um, so those are just a few different topics within the whole body of fake of fake news. So for now, um, I'm going to switch over to my screen so I can show you some online um, ebooks that you can find in um, Galileo. And there are different types of monographs as well um, that are also compilation monographs. So uh, give me a minute and we will look at my screen.